Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and remember this sofa that I shared recently and also this chair? Well, after sharing those, I had tons of requests to build an entire matching set, so I got you. It's like a bug. So since I had built the one-seater chair and the three-seater sofa, it only made sense to also build a two-seater love seat. If you're looking for a video on the love seat, I did not make one because I literally built the exact same chair and sofa just with different length slats to accommodate two cushions. So I thought it would be kind of beating a dead horse to make a third video of the exact same project. However, you guys highly requested a matching coffee and side table build to go with these seating arrangements. So I'm excited to be sharing that in this video. And if you're ready to get building, let's go. There are so many ways to build a coffee table, but since the goal was to build it to match the outdoor seating, I tried to come up with a design that was equally as simple to build, used similar materials, and kept the clean lines and slight angles. I think I came up with something that checked all the boxes and is super easy to modify to whatever size that you need. I tried to make as much of this as possible from scraps that I already had. I built these two tables from cedarwood that I had left over from several projects that I've been working on this summer. I definitely encourage you to check your scrap pile before buying any materials because these pieces are fairly small and it's likely that you already have almost everything that you need in your scrap pile already. I started with the coffee table by cutting down four 4x4s four for the legs. I mitered these 10 degrees so that they would angle outward toward the bottom slightly. Then I cut two 2x4s two and two 2x2s two two to install between the legs to make the full table base. Since the legs are angled 10 degrees, I did have to bevel these 2x4s 10 degrees as well. This will all make a lot more sense as things start to come together here in just a minute. I made sure to sand everything well before assembling as the cedarwood typically comes pretty rough. Then I drilled pocket holes into the ends of the 2x2s and the 2x4s. It's important to note here that I drilled the pocket holes in the 2x4s off center. These holes should be within 2.5 inches of the outside edge of the board. I assembled the table base with exterior pocket hole screws and this is why the holes need to be offset. I attached these 2x4s 1 inch inset from the outside edge of the legs. Once both long sides of the table were assembled, I added the 2x2s between them. And just a tip here, this would be easier if you assembled this with the pocket holes towards the top versus the inside as it was a pretty tight fit to drive these screws into the second side. But with that, this table base was complete. And I never trust my workbench for a level because it's covered in wood glue and epoxy spills, so I did test this on the table saw to see if it rocked. <laughs> And now the table base is done and it's time to add the top. I made the top kind of differently. So this may be a little confusing at first, but it'll come together, so hang tight. I made the top as a frame with slats on the inside. So first I assembled a frame made from two by fours using pocket holes and screws. Once this frame was together, I laid it upside down, then flipped the table base upside down on top of it and made sure it was centered. Now I could screw them together through the bottom of the 2x4s on the table base. And I was already loving this design. Now I needed to add the slats to fill the center of this frame. 
I could use two by material to fill this, but I saved a lot of money by using a one by six cedar fence picket for the slats. But since the one by sixes are thinner material, I needed to add a spacer block to bring the top flush to the top of the two by four frame. So I grabbed a scrap piece of two by four and ripped it into strips basically to make my own one by twos. I lined the long sides of the top frame with these pieces and screwed them in place. These will basically act as a spacer block to help lift the thinner slats up to the top of the two by fours. Now I can cut my fence pickets to length to place inside. A one by six would work great in place of a cedar fence picket, but fence pickets are super cheap. However, they are typically about an eighth of an inch thinner than a regular one by six board. So your spacer blocks may need to be a little thicker if you use a fence picket in order to raise these pieces up flush with the frame. That's just something to keep in mind when choosing your materials. These slats should fit in here with about a quarter of an inch gap between them to allow the water to drain off since this will be used outside. Now I made sure that they all fit, but I didn't attach these yet because I thought it would be a lot easier to stain all the slats before securing them in place. So I'm gonna build the matching side table first, then finish them both at once before attaching the slats. All right, so I'm really struggling with the design here. <laughs> I built the coffee table, love the coffee table. I think the thick legs look great on the coffee table. I was kind of concerned with the side table that the thick legs would be too much. So I threw this together really quick just to see what it looked like with two by fours as the legs. I'm just not sure how I feel about it. Obviously it's not finished. I just threw the slats in there to see what it looked like. Kind of thinking four by four legs would look a little bit better. These I feel like just look kind of scrawny. Now the thick legs may look too beefy, but we're gonna give it a try. So I actually built this side table three times. Once using two by twos for the legs, once using two by fours for the legs, and then finally I just decided to go with four by fours for the legs. Next to the chunky legs on the sofa and the coffee table, the smaller legs just looked kind of scrawny. So ultimately I just went with four by fours and built this table exactly like the coffee table, only with shorter sides and longer legs. All right, so I have my four legs, a little bit longer than the coffee table legs. Then I have my front and back supports with pocket holes already drilled. And then I have my side supports with pocket holes already drilled. So I'm just gonna sand these and then screw it together real quick. Literally exactly like the coffee table. So I'm hoping that despite the fact it's a little bit different proportions, it still looks good. So we'll see. Full transparency, I reused this piece off of something else. So it already had the pocket holes drilled in it. So I didn't necessarily drill these um, over to the edge like I did with the coffee table. So for this, we're just gonna wing it and just kind of get as close as we can. Just as long as there's a little bit of inset here, it doesn't really matter. This is just a design element. You could definitely just stick them flush like this if you wanted. Just like with the coffee table, I assembled this table base using pocket holes and screws. And this time you'll notice that I followed my own advice and I faced the pocket holes on the two by twos toward the top so that they were easier to screw in place. All right, is it too chunky? Is it not too chunky? I do not know. 
Let's attach the top first. So I built a frame out of two by fours exactly like I did for the coffee table, only smaller. Okay, the moment of truth is the design too chunky? Probably a little. I don't know. I think it looks better than the two by four, so. Then all that was left was adding the spacer blocks and the top slats. And with that, these two tables were ready to finish up. Snack break. You have crap all over your face. I removed the slats and gave the table frames both a coat of outdoor stain and sealant. And once this was dry, it was ready to use. Well, kind of. Okay, so full disclosure, I'm disassembling this tabletop to rebuild another table at some point, so I didn't secure these pieces in place, but you should screw these in place if you plan to actually use this as a side table. But also, I thought it was easier to stain this tabletop slats prior to securing them into the table. So I've already stained these, and in order to secure them in here, I suggest probably running like a bead of glue along here. You can set these in place and just let the glue dry, and that will likely be all that you need. But if you wanted, you could also drive like a brad nail into the ends of here or a screw. A screw would tend to split pretty easily on these thin boards so close to the edge. So a brad nail would probably be my suggestion if I were going to secure these in place right now. Or you could just set them here and not attach them at all and hope they don't blow away. And most likely they won't blow away. But anyway. That's how to secure the slats if you're curious about your options. These tables are both really sturdy and rigid. If you're putting them on an uneven surface, I suggest installing some foot levelers on the legs to help keep them stable, just like I did for the matching chairs shown here. And with that, these are ready to enjoy. I'm really loving this simple design and how well it goes with the love seat. I'm excited to be able to finally share this entire matching outdoor furniture set with you and I hope you enjoyed watching it come together. If you want to build one of your own, be sure to grab the plans for the chair, the love seat, sofa, side table, and coffee table, all linked in the video description. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, be sure to follow along so you don't miss out on all the projects coming up. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.